So thanks for coming. Um, two more sessions. Uh, both of our sessions in track three from here on out will be about penetration testing, which is an exciting topic. Um, uh, <coughs> Samson Chandler, security analyst from RSA, spent um, 10 years or so um, in, in a lot of different industries, Fortune 500 companies, helping them with pin tests, assessments, vulnerability, risk assessments, and those type of things. Very knowledgeable, so please give him your attention. And, uh, All right, so yeah, my name is Samson Chandler. Uh, I'm a senior analyst at RSA. Um, the title of my slide is Penetration Testing versus Red Teaming and How to Make Better Reports. Uh, the reason for this talk is because I hear um, red team thrown a lot, uh, thrown out a lot when they mean penetration tests, and the confusion leads our customers to be confused about what they want or what they need, which makes them not trust us. And that's just a time bomb until it blows up in our face when customers start stop trusting us, especially with such sensitive data, and our reports show what we provided to these customers and that's why it's extremely important that we uh, make them the best of our abilities. Uh, a little about me. Um, I have always been into IT and tech. Um, back in the old days when we used to have land parties. Um, interned in high school. Didn't really think of information security as a career. Uh, what we would do is we would mess with the uh, Indian Windows scammers that would say, oh, you got a virus, please call Windows. Um, and I would have to figure out how do I secure a virtual machine so they can't mess up my system while at the same time disabling maybe command prompt or some service just to make them mad. Um, moved on to help desk. Uh, while I was doing help desk, I thought I wanted to do software development, um, but I don't really like write code all that much. Uh, and then I found InfoSec, and I was like, cool, I can break stuff. Um, you can pay a lot of money to do it. Um, and then the last one is from Kevin Mitnick, just because I wanted to make myself seem important. Um, <laughs> so, customer comes to you and says, I want a pen test. What does that mean, right? Um, why are they doing it? What do they want? What do they need? Um, it's usually because they failed an audit or they have to do it for insurance purposes or whatever. Um, but they really don't know what they want. Uh, I recently had a recruiter contact me and say, hey, we're looking for a uh, penetration tester, um, would you be interested? And then when I started asking questions, she said, well, we just want you to do an assessment of all the vulnerabilities and um, give us that report. I said, okay, do you want me to manually verify them? She goes, no, 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 we just want you to tell us all our vulnerabilities. Which, if you don't know, it's just a vulnerability assessment, you can do that with Nessus or OpenVAS and be done. So that's one of the issues. Um, and then, you know, what do we mean when we say, oh, I'm on a red team, or I do pen tests, or um, it just gets confusing. Um, so again, issues we face, gonna go over penetration testing, red teaming, then cover reports, and then wrap it up. Um, so again, the issue is key terms. If you ask somebody the difference between a vulnerability, a penetration test, and a red team engagement, you will get different answers. Just like you may get pretty different answers if you ask what's the difference between a risk, a vulnerability and exploit it. Um, they all have significant meaning, they all kind of deal with each other, uh, but clearly identifying these terms and knowing what they mean is highly important. And then, uh, do we have any analysts in the room? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so, may I ask what you do on a day to day basis? Uh, well, you're looking at alerts and you're reacting to those alerts. Great. Okay. Why, why cool? Gotcha. So then if we look at Indeed and we look at cybersecurity analysts, uh, it's a little small just because they had so many requirements. Uh, it says interpersonal skills and technical expertise, common. Um, maintain current knowledge and ongoing proficiency in security tools, practices, and procedures, okay. Analyze, respond, and mitigate cybersecurity threats. Pretty much they basically go over, they want you to be a uh, incident response, but at the same time they want you to do pen testing they want you to document everything, uh, document their IT uh, disaster recovery builds, uh, conduct those, um, all for an analyst position, right? So where he may be an analyst um, doing reviewing logs, uh, we see this and it just kind of gets boggled down. Um, and people don't know what it means. And then you have issues with recruiters saying, hey, I've got this position open for you. 
Um, they might say it's a pink tester or a red team. Um, Bats, sums of salary difference and technical abilities. Um, so penetration tests. Let's look at the definition goals, how it differs from a vulnerability assessment, different types, scope and uh, rules of engagement, deciding which is best for your customer, and how each type provides value to that customer. So vulnerability assessment should be done quarterly. Um, anytime the new equipment or software is added, um, it doesn't really have that much effect on the environment. Uh, it's not very accurate, which is the main problem with it. Uh, but it will give you a great idea of what you may have. Um, and again, a baseline. Uh, it detects all possible vulnerabilities that it knows about. Um, and again, it could be wrong. You will get a lot of false positives. And then we look at a penetration test. The goal is to compromise target systems and gain access to information to determine business impact. Uh, basically, the goal is to identify as many vulnerabilities as I can, verify by exploiting those, and then determine a risk score, or, uh, yeah, risk score to uh, determine business impact of those. Um, and then you have different types of penetration tests within that uh, to give the customer exactly what they want. Um, done in a professional and safe manner because they know what's going on. They may have you do it at night or on the weekends, so that way it's not affecting business. Um, clearly defined rules of engagement so you don't make anybody mad. Uh, and gives them a really better, much better idea than a vulnerability assessment. And it should be done annually. Um, typically it should be done by a third party. You don't want it in-house, especially if you're doing like a uh, black box sex or something like that just because they know the network. Um, and again, it detects all possible vulnerabilities. And then this is what you get when you have a vulnerability, the asset, and then the threat, whether it be insider, APT, whatever, you get a risk score. So a vulnerability is a flaw, and then you take a secure an asset, threat is somebody who intends to uh, harm your business by whatever means, and the risk is the potential loss or damage because of that. So then we look at different types of penetration tests. Um, we've got network services, web application, client side, wireless, social engineering. Typically, you're just going to see network services, web application. They're pretty much all the same thing. Uh, there's not too much social engineering, um, client side as well. But the main thing we want to look at is uh, three different types. So we have black box, white box, or clear box, crystal box and then gray box. Um, black box is where they have no idea of your network architecture, no idea what software you're using. They use OSINT uh, techniques to identify um, your network layout and then determine the vulnerabilities through that. Um, white box, the tester knows uh, the network infrastructure has access to the software source code and um, they're able to do static code analysis. Uh, whereas the black box here is just doing dynamic. Um, and the gray box is a little mixture of those two. It's a little more focused. Uh, in my opinion, it's probably the best of the two. Um, well, really, it depends on what they want. Um, but where you get the main differences in these is a black box is great if you want a simulated real world attack, um, but you are sacrificing time, which means money which means less results. If I have a uh, 10 week penetration test, right? And I spend the first, let's say, week doing OSINT to try to figure out um, the structure of your organization, uh, your network infrastructure, what software you use, that's time wasted. I could have been identifying vulnerabilities and exploiting them and giving you a more clearly defined picture of the security posture of your enterprise. Um, white box, they know what you have, they can get right to it. Um, again, it doesn't really simulate a real world attack, but you're basically throwing everything at it to see what sticks, and then getting a, a better idea, a much better idea, uh, of where your weaknesses are and where you need to improve on. And then you have the steps of the pen test, I didn't know techno uh, your technical ability of people that would be in here, so I didn't know if they would know. Um, first, you have information gathering. 
Um, you enumerate all you can, try to find as much information as you can um, in the time allotted. You don't want to spend too much time on this, uh, but you definitely want to be thorough. It's kind of a really hard balancing act. Um, threat modeling, uh, really vulnerability analysis is the main one. And you exploit it, you try to do quiz exploitation, either maintain persistence or just do privilege escalation, depending on what you want. And then reporting, everybody's favorite part of the pen test. It's not fun. Um, I don't. I didn't get into information security to write reports, um, but it's what I have to do in order to do what I love. And if I want to continue to do what I love, then I got to make sure that my reports are great. Um, that way, it just looks. Have you ever been to a bad mechanic and they rip you off, and then it kind of just ruins the trust for any other mechanic? And you're always kind of second guessing yourself. I always kind of related to that. If I have a bad report. Um, the client's going to say, why did I pay so much money for this? Uh, and then not even that, uh, you know, others in the community are going to see this. They may not get another pen test done for a year or two years. And if they come in and I see something and they're like um, giving ridiculous uh, risk scores just so they can make it look like they did something really intense and the company has all these problems, and then I say something completely different, uh, they're not going to trust either one of us but I know that I did mine right. And then again, it just creates mistrust. People don't want to do it. Um, and it's already hard enough to pitch security to quote, enterprises, right? We're not viewed as a, uh, we're pretty much viewed as a loss, right? It's gonna cost us money. It's gonna maybe cost downtime. Uh, it's gonna be stressful. Um, and there's not much payback unless you can effectively communicate um, how you, gain that back in security, um, either with dollar amounts, um, you know, you get kind of tricky with that, so I, you might want to stay away from that. So again, uh, value of a pen test, you determine the feasibility of a particular set of attack vectors, you identify um, high risk vulnerabilities by manually exploiting them and seeing just how much you can get away with, um, and then from the lower risk vulnerabilities, um, Highlight vulnerability is difficult or impossible to detect. So, you know, if I have, if I'm exploiting GS exec, right, um, a sim is going to pick up GS exec easily. If I'm able to alter that exploit so that it's not detected um, by the virus scan or your sim, uh, you know, that's still the same exploit. I've just simply modified it a little bit to bypass uh, detection. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have assess, test, provide, meet, um, and uh, pre-implement, validate. Um, you're probably not going to be around for that. You basically just hand off the report. And so that's why it's very, very, very critical if you can to provide steps to detect or maybe steps to prevent even. I understand that's kind of getting into the realm of blue team. Um, but I, I, I always want people to who are pen testers to at least do some digital forensics or incident response, um, or even just sit with them, just so they can see what does it look like from the opposite end of um, when a penetration test is happening, right? What are they looking for? Because um, then that tells me, how can I avoid this? If I don't know all the information, or if I'm going in there half blind, um, I'm just not that good at my job, it just makes me better. I can still do the job, but it's not as good. Um, again, Findings need to be presented in a business sense. So when you're done with the report, right, uh, you have to present this. And you want to present this in a way uh, that non-technical people understand. And presenting to directors and CEOs um, was probably one of the scariest things for me. I talk to them all the time now. Uh, but I was scared, nervous, um, that you know I was going to mess up or say something stupid or they were going to call me out on something technical. Um, what I found was that I wasn't prepared enough. Um, I didn't have my findings to back up my, um, I, didn't, I didn't have appendices to back up my findings. Um, I didn't have enough information. So anytime you talk dollar amounts, you better have um, something to back up how you got that dollar amount. Anytime you talk about downtime, um, you need to show how did you get that. You can't just be like, uh, you know, it, it took us down, our disaster recovery policy states that we should be back within 12 hours. 
12 hours of production downtime equals this amount, right? You need to go a little more in depth than that. What's the maximum um, downtime that could have for production? Um, and really um, put that in terms they understand. And then you, defining scope and RO uh, rules of engagement is probably the biggest difference between a pen test and a, a red team engagement. Um, with a pen test, it's, scope is more narrow. If you've got a list of IP addresses um, or IP ranges, uh, the rules of engagement, usually no um, arc poisoning, um, not so much social engineering, um, things of that nature, whereas a red team engagement, um, Basically, you have one main objective, you need to complete that objective, complete it by any means you feel you need. Of course, there are some exceptions. Um, you don't want to go too crazy, but uh, it's, it's not as restrictive. Um, so the pros and versus cons, right? Um, this is between a penetration test and a vulnerability scan. Um, cost is always going to be, anytime you have more time on the pen test, the rate more cost, um, outages to critical systems. Uh, you know, I don't know how many of you have heard the MMAP scan is going to take down the server if you run it. Be careful. Um, you can also do other stuff that may, you know, lock out a admin account and then they can't get in and are freaking out. Um, kill a service, something of that nature. Um, now we're seeking valuable information due to limited scope. Uh, if, if your customer, you know, you need to clearly and effectively communicate that having a broad scope will give you a broader picture of your security posture. If you limit me and what I can do, um, then you're not getting much out of it. You're not getting the most uh, benefit out of your pen test. Um, and then red team engagement, you've got, it's originally from the U.S. military, uh, so they came up with it as a way to um, better their defense. Uh, so that's where we got the term. Uh, so we're gonna go over the definition, goals, misconceptions, method examples. Does your company really need it? Uh, citing if it's best for it and then building a team. So I want you to think of this. Pen test equals pirates, red team equals ninjas, right? Uh, pirates go in there, make a mess, grab whatever they can. Ninjas try to be stealthy do what they need to do and get out. So red team, uh, again, it's more goal-based. Um, they can identify physical hardware, software, human vulnerabilities, social engineering, um, trying to access a database uh, or server room. Um, gives you a more clearly defined idea of how a attacker would attack your organization and helps identify and address all security weaknesses, but the main thing is to help the blue team. How are we gonna help the blue team to identify attacks and mitigate them, and as well as prevent them? Um, the full scope, multi-layered adversarial attack simulation created to measure how well an organization staff networks, blah, blah, blah. Um, basically just telling you, um, and, and the red team should be more internal, right? Because you want them constantly improving the blue team. Um, so that's why when a pen test you have a third party, a red team should be more internal. Um, so what's the main difference? Again, it's supporting the blue team is the major one. Uh, the goals, the length of the engagement, whereas a pen test usually is about 10 to 12 weeks. A red team engagement can be anywhere from 14 to 18 to 20 weeks. Um, they have a, members have a more clearly defined role, whereas I could have somebody doing an in-app scan, another person checking out the web app, uh, and a, a red team, you have maybe somebody doing social engineering, maybe somebody doing uh, exploit, customization, um, and they are very, very knowledgeable in the business. Uh, and the methodology is different, so you have reconnaissance, which is more heavily dependent on reconnaissance, you weaponize it, um, you deliver it, exploit it. Uh, it's more about taking your time, and if they get detected, it's, it's a good thing. It means the blue team is great, uh, but it also means that they failed their mission, right? Uh, so it's kind of a trade off, it's a weird one. Um, kind of sense of OSINT methods, weaponization, um, collecting information, infrastructure, about infrastructure, um, crafting custom malicious files, 
delivery, uh, the actual launch, how are we deploying this exploit? Um, installation, is it cyber or physical? Command and control, maintaining persistence, um, and then actions on objective. Do we need to uh, exfiltrate some data? Do we need to gain access to the server rooms? What do we need to do and how does it do? So what do you need, right? Um, so vulnerability assessment, uh, if you just want to scan and enumerate, penetration tests, uh, are you looking to actually test your systems? Are you looking um, to get a more clearly defined idea of what your uh, security posture looks like in your enterprise? Um, and then the importance of those vulnerabilities that can be exploited, and then a red team engagement. Do you want to learn everything you possibly can about a specific goal? Um, do you want to improve your blue team? Then again, um, that should be internal, so you really you want to build an inside team. And that, that you really don't need that for small, medium businesses and most big businesses at all. Um, I, I get to hear about a breach caused by an APT. Um, <clears throat> it's usually something dumb and in these related or phishing. The, the, the simple stuff works. I don't need to customize an exploit if I can get into your systems with a phishing attack, right? Um, and I, when I, I know people are tired of hearing end users and any, and we need to train them better. Um, but you don't need a fancy SIM. Um, I say that working for RSA, so it's reported. Uh, uh, but your best <laughs> IDS, not IPS, is going to be people. Uh, so the more better trained your people are, um, the better they are identifying. If they see something weird, they're going to call it in. Um, but again, that's, that's your best line of defense. Um, so again, penetration tests limited due to time and scope. Uh, Red Team campaign seeks to remove these limitations uh, and give you a more clearly defined um, simulated attack. And then reports, right? So this is our end product. It shows the work we did. Um, it, I always kind of related it to a resume. Like you don't want to make a spelling error in your resume, um, you want to impress them, you want to grab their attention, you want to talk to terms they understand. You want to do the same thing with a report, right? You want to make sure that they understand what, if I tell them remote code execution, do you think they're going to know what that means, right? If I say, um, it's going to cost us X dollars now if this is exploited, the risk of this being exploited is pretty high due to how easily it is to be exploited. Um, they understand that, right? But again, you need, you need stuff to back up that. And that's why you have um, appendices and stuff like that to provide more detailed documentation if they need it. Uh, but you want to keep it pretty simple, right? Because uh, yeah. uh, So communication issues um, that I regularly hear is I can't, they don't listen, I don't have time. Um, what that tells me is that it may be an issue of they can't, but it possibly could be, how are you communicating these? Um, it, there's plenty of different ways you can look at this. Uh, so I'll keep going a little out of time. Uh, but I, what, I, what, I, what I want you to take away from this is that uh, really communicating with your customer during, during those initial meetings about what you want or what they want and helping them figure that out and explaining them in depth will make your job a thousand times easier and then really putting in the time and effort to developing better reports um, just makes us look better as a whole. Um, some ways you can do that is usually have a template for um, your methodology. Uh, you usually already have the scope defined. Um, the executive summary can be a little bit tricky. Uh, you need to kind of fill that out for what are they wanting. Do they want something detailed? How detailed should that go? Do they just want to hear you have this? This is the score we gave you. This is the risk it's going to cause. Keep it short, simple, and sweet, but then as well have um, have stuff to back up if they ask more questions. If you have somebody else like a CISO or somebody director of IT asking you, well, could you go more into how you exploited this? Um, where we might see this happen, blah, blah, blah. Um, preparation, uh, and then if you don't know, if you ever do CTF or anything like that, um, document everything. So if you're new to this, start recording your screens, start uh, saving your scans, um, 
just practice doing that and just practice doing the, the reporting. Offset has a template uh, that's great, and you can just do that for your CTS and get kind of in the habit of how do I write this report. Um, and then at the end of the slide, I've got a bunch of public pen test reports that you can look at to see how they do it, see what maybe you like, um, add it in there, um, or use it to add on to your reports. Um, and then this is just pentest.ws. It's a cool little note taking. Um, it imports XML files, uh, pretty much any scan. Uh, it's got CyberChef, um, just a bunch of stuff. Uh, basically, organization will help your report writing because you have a clearly defined thought process, um, taking lots of notes, screen recordings, everything like that. We'll help you go back through it. I can't tell you how many times I have sat there trying to exploit a vulnerability exploit it and be like, oh, I didn't take any notes or screen grab or anything like that. Now I have to redo it and waste my time. Um, so I'm going to cancel right there. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, so the takeaways I want you to uh, take away from this talk is that pen test is like risk engagement. Uh, you know, really define what is your client's goals, make sure they understand the difference. Um, Having clearly defined objectives and talking, taking good notes will make your job so much easier and not even funny. Um, reports are in product, they last a long time. Uh, I've seen some that are old, five years old. Um, it's how we justify our positions, our salary. I like making a lot of money. I like having job security. Uh, I want to continue to do this, and the best way we can do that is providing more value to our customers. Um, and then doing little things will provide substantial value. Uh, how do I detect this exploit? How do I prevent it? Usually aren't in a report. If you can add those, you provide substantial value to that report. Best IDS IPS is people. And if you are a blue team, learn offense. If you are offense, learn defense. They will just help you be better at your job. Thank you.